Hey, hi, and hello, Angelisa, your host here. I have created a couple of short stories here, some um, spooky tales from writers, and I am so excited to be sharing these with you during the week of spookiness. It's Halloween in a few days, so I thought this was a great time to gather these stories together and uh, we can get into the spooky spirit just before Halloween. Get cozy, maybe have a blanket, maybe don't drive or maybe you can drive. I don't know if you're okay with like spooky stories and it doesn't get to you like it does to me. Um, yeah, just get uh, get comfy, get cozy, sip on you know beverage, whether it's uh, tea or coffee in my case. Um, Let's get cozy and get spooked out. Okay, I'll catch you guys on the other side. I moved to this small town due to work. It was around the year 2008. I worked night shifts, so I spent a lot of time outside riding and exploring on my dirt bike before work. There wasn't too many dirt bikers around at the time, and I didn't really meet anyone either. The town had this eerie feel to it, almost like no one really left their homes, and if they did, it was to the local grocery store. I dirt bike by myself. I found a few trails in the woods that wasn't too far from my place where I was living at the time. The area was called Owl Creek. These trails looked like they might have been dirt bike trails at one point, but they were overgrown, making it really hard to ride through. So I would bring pruning shears and a saw with me to clean up some areas for a better trail ride experience. I thought if I'm going to live here, I might as well make the most of it and create some fun trails for me to ride on before and after work, since there wasn't much happening in town anyways. One morning, I got up and had my usual, my coffee, breakfast, and I decided to spend the day building trails. I had my eye on this one section I found a couple days before, and I wanted to explore it. Because I didn't start work till 6 p.m., I thought I would have plenty of time to get to this one section of the trail and to do a little bit of trail maintenance and be back well before 5 p.m. to get ready for my shift. As I was packing my backpack, something came over me, and I remember this thought so clearly. It was almost like something told me to grab a headlamp. I never ride with a headlamp because I work in the evenings, but this time, something just told me to pack one. And I decided to grab my headlamp that I was gifted a couple years ago from my parents. I turned it on to make sure it was working since I never used it before. And sure enough, it did. By the time I got myself ready to ride, I think it was 9 a.m. Great, I thought, plenty of time to explore, clean up some trails, and be back in time for work. So off I went. I took the same route to the trails, as I always do, and I started riding through the forest. Because I spent so much time cleaning up these trails, this ride felt pretty good. I remember thinking, all that hard work of maintaining this trail really paid off. There's something to be said when you start riding in the woods, you kind of lose yourself a bit and you connect with nature in a way. Let's just say I kind of felt that on my ride. I finally arrived to a fork in the trail. To the left was a trail that has never been touched in years. Well, at least that's what it looked like. This is the trail I've been wanting to explore on. So today is the day I thought, because I have all my gear with me, I'll start cutting through the branches and clearing away the fallen debris to create a trail. I parked my bike and with my backpack, I started to hike into this less traveled trail, clipping away at bushes, cleaning up the debris, the fallen branches and logs. I did my best to clear a path that I thought would be the best time on a dirt bike. At this point, I think I spent a good two hours walking and cutting bush that I kind of forgot about time in a way. It was odd. It was almost like 
Time didn't exist. I pulled my phone out and saw that it was 3 p.m. How did I not notice how long I've been walking for, I thought. It almost felt like I was lost. I turned around, and the trail that I'd been working on and clearing was no longer cleared. What the fuck? I just spent hours cleaning this trail and cutting back the bush. What just happened? I paused, took a deep breath. Maybe I need to eat something, I thought. If it's really 3 p.m., then I haven't had anything to eat since 9 a.m., breakfast time. I dug into my backpack. I grabbed a granola bar and munched on that. As I was eating, I thought maybe I just got turned around. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, or maybe I wasn't cutting the branches back enough. Now that I had my snack, I clearly needed to get back to my dirt bike to head home since I lost track of time. Now that I'm facing the way I thought I came from, I see two trails that look like they were trails, but both of them are overgrown. I am feeling disoriented. I just spent so much time cutting my way through a trail, and now where did that go? I decided to choose the trail on the right, thinking this must be the one I was just on. As I walked back, I could tell the sun was setting. If you've been in the woods before with tall, looming trees, you know that feeling that it hits you and you think, I only have so much time to get back before it's pitch black. It gets very dark in the woods, very quickly. I checked my phone again and the screen illuminated the area around me. The clock read 6 p.m. Shit. I thought, I'm supposed to be at work. For the first time in my life, I had this feeling of unease sweep through me. Not once have I ever been late for work, and I have never lost track of time like this before. This time, I picked up the pace, started walking faster, and faster, almost like I was running. I am moving around with my arms up because the branches from the trees were whipping me in the face. This does not look like the trail I came in on. At this point, the forest was dark. I grabbed my headlamp, put it on, and continued walking. I was so confused. I had no idea how I ended up on a different trail. I kept replaying the early afternoon on how maybe I got lost, but nothing was standing out. It wasn't until I stopped dead in my tracks. I heard something, almost like a whispering. I thought for sure I was going crazy at this point. I walked another couple feet in front of me, and the whisper got louder and came from a different direction. And then I heard it. I heard a hum of an engine. A part of me felt a type of relief. Not that anyone would be looking for me, because I didn't know anyone in town. But maybe someone from work knew I would be out here. But then again, no one at work knows I dirt bike. The engine grew louder, and I saw something moving in the trees ahead of me. I remember yelling, Hello? Hello? Over Over here! here. Hello? Hello. Over Over here. here! And I was waving my arms around, trying to get this rider's attention. I know my headlamp was bright, so they had to have seen me. But then the rider continued on and disappeared. I felt scared. I pulled out my phone to see if I had any reception because in this area, there's no cell service. And to my surprise, my phone was dead. What the fuck? It was fully charged an hour ago. What is happening? I decided to head towards the area where I saw the rider and thought maybe this was the trail out. So I head over to that direction and continued on with my hike. And then I heard it again. 
the hum of an engine, but this time in a completely different direction. I couldn't be any more confused, but I took a chance and started running towards the sound. I ran as fast as I could. I could feel my heartbeat in my throat this time, and I just wanted to get out of this forest. As I was nearing the sound of the dirt bike, I saw it. I stopped as I stared before me. This was not a dirt biker. Well, it was, but this was different. Again, it was such a long day, and because I was feeling disoriented and maybe in a survival mode, it looked like I was staring at a ghost rider. The face of the rider was contorted. It did not look like a human whatsoever. The dirt bike looked like it was falling off a cliff. It obviously has seen better days. I let out the biggest scream and bolted the opposite direction of this rider. And I just remember running. I couldn't tell you what direction I was running to, but I didn't stop. In fact, my legs wouldn't let me stop. I ran all the way until I saw a sparkle. I saw it. It was my dirt bike. From the headlamp shining on my exhaust pipe, I knew it was mine. I hopped on it, I kickstarted it, and finally turned it over. I revved my engine and got out of there so fast. Finally, I came home that evening thinking I would never see the light of day ever again. I checked the clock on the stove and it was 3 a.m. I tried to talk to a few locals in town about it weeks after this happened, but I just feel like I was going crazy. People didn't want to talk to me about it or they looked at me like I was insane. It wasn't until one year ago I decided to visit this town again. I moved away shortly after my horrible experience in the woods. And while I was there, I was strolling through what you would call downtown. And I saw a sign on one of the windows of the local grocery store. And the sign read, Beware of the woods at Owl Creek. Under those bold letters, there was a list of hikers, mountain bikers, and dirt bike riders that went missing in the woods of Owl Creek. Goosebumps came over me. The hair on my neck stood up. I could have been one of those missing people. After seeing that sign, I approached a few of the locals, but no one would talk to me. To this day, I still think of that place. It's like it has its own haunting mystery, and all of the locals know about it. Ooh, so that is why I do not ever ride by myself in the woods. (laughs) But I love that this person wanted to do trail maintenance and they were creating their own trails or their own trail systems. I feel like, um, yeah, that that was great. But holy moly, thinking that you're never going to get home or you have that panic when you are so deep in the woods and being like, am I going to make it home? I couldn't imagine. I feel like I've had that before. In fact, I know I have. Um, A group of three of us, so two other girl riders, we went into the woods. I've never been on these trails before and um darkness fell real quick around us and when you are in the trees it is so dark in there and uh, there were moments where I didn't know if I'd make it home (laughs) and I did not have a headlamp I had a headlight on my dirt bike but it was not enough so ever since then I've always packed a headlamp all right we're gonna get on to the next story I'll catch you on the other side. On a cold night. On a cold night. Tonight. On a cold night. On a cold night.
organized a ladies only snowmobile group ride. It was a chilly day, but tons of snow fell overnight. There was a ton of excitement buzzing in the parking lot as we unloaded our snowmobiles and got ready for the ride. There was a total of six of us. Pretty good size for a group ride, I thought. You don't want any more than that because it can be hard to keep an eye on everyone. It was really inspiring to see these women come together, some familiar faces and some new ones too. As we finished gearing up, strapping on our helmets, I noticed one rider stood out. Her sled was older. It looked like it came from the 70s. It was a skidoo and very well maintained, I must add. The woman riding it, her name is Wendy. She had a fashion sense to match. She was wearing this retro yellow one-piece no suit. It was matching with her sled and it obviously turned heads. I complimented her on her outfit and her snowmobile and she smiled, almost like she gets that compliment a lot. It was clear that Wendy had an eye for style and an appreciation for vintage snowmobiles. So after getting to know everyone's name in the group, we set off riding the trail. We get to an area on the trail where you need to start weaving through the forest for about seven kilometers. We finally head into the zone we planned on going to. It was our destination. The zone is a bowl-like area with tons and tons of powder. We were so lucky to have that much snow. It's been a rough couple winters, so this was very exciting. The vibes were at an all-time high. The wind was in our hair. We didn't stop riding. You could hear us all laughing and giggling under our helmets. It was honestly so much fun. Time flew. And before we knew it, the sun began to dip behind the mountains. We gathered up to head back before darkness fell. We were at the trail entrance to head back to the parking lot, but when I counted, there was only five of us riders. Wendy was missing. We killed our engines and listened. Silence. We were the only riders in this area. Taylor, another rider, and I decided to go back into the bull area to look for Wendy. This time, the snow was glowing. The sky was illuminated by the sunset. I think it was around 5 p.m. It gets dark early in the winter where we are, and by 6 p.m. it's complete darkness. So Taylor and I drove around, but there was no sound or sight of Wendy. It's kind of scary this time of day because it's cooler and the mountains feel overpowering, as if an avalanche can come down at any moment. The further we rode, the heavier the feeling of dread sank into my chest. There was no sign of Wendy. We called her name into the cold, Wendy, but nothing answered. Panic grew in my throat. My heart started pounding, and after waiting what felt like forever, we rode back to the others, only to be met with more confusion. Katerina, another rider with us, suggested Wendy might have gone ahead of us and returned to the parking lot. At this point, I hoped she was right. You definitely do not want to leave a rider in the backcountry overnight. We sped down the trail the darkness swallowing everything in front of us. We rode through the forest going as fast as we could. As we were in the thick of it, darkness fell around us as if a blanket just swallowed us whole. The only way to describe the feeling I felt as I drove towards our trucks is fear gripping its claws around me. There was no Wendy, no vintage sled, and no vehicle that might have belonged to her. I racked my brain. What did Wendy drive? Had anyone seen her arrive? As the rest of the group pulled beside me on their sleds, I asked if any of them had noticed Wendy's vehicle. No one had. That's when it hit us. 
Wendy had been waiting for us when we first arrived in the morning, already geared up and ready to ride. But none of us had seen her pull in and unload her snowmobile. And now, we couldn't find any trace of her. At this point, I was shaking. I was desperate. We pulled out our cell phones and started searching through forums, Facebook groups, and Google, just trying to track down Wendy's contact information. As we dug deeper, something eerie happened. An article popped up. Wendy Harrison, a woman who died in an avalanche accident in this very area back in 1972. A chill ran down my spine as I saw a photo. This photo was a spitting image of a woman who looked very similar to Wendy. As I was replaying our entire trip this morning, memories of our ride flashed through my mind. The last time I saw Wendy, she had stopped in the forest on the trail, pulled over, and she told me to go ahead, saying she just needed a minute. I remember asking if she was okay, do you need any help with anything? Because she was on a vintage sled, I thought maybe it broke down. Her voice echoed in my mind, I'm more than okay. And come to think of it, I remember riding in the bowl and I don't recall seeing Wendy at all. The rest of the group said the same thing. They don't remember seeing Wendy riding in the powder bowl. We only saw her on the trail in the forest. I think because we were so excited about all the snowfall, we just took off and had so much fun that we thought everyone was with us. It wasn't until Taylor pointed out that it was now 8 p.m., We need to call search and rescue for a missing person. So I called, reported Wendy. I gave as much information that I could that she was on a 1970 vintage skidoo and that unfortunately none of us had any of her contact information. Because the five of us was in shock, scared and unsure of what to do in this situation, we decided to stay in the parking lot and sit inside my truck. The sleds were left unloaded. We were still in our snowsuits. I just remember feeling guilty, thinking this was all my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I let having fun come over me and didn't pay attention to others. All of us were feeling this way. Now we were waiting to hear back from Search and Rescue. After what felt like hours, we finally got a call back from the rescue team. After some heavy and intensive research, they called and said that Wendy doesn't exist. The dispatcher or rescue team member mentioned she found a file that had a name that was the same. She thought it was odd at first, but realized that looking at reports over the past couple years, I wasn't the first to report a 1970s vintage sled and rider in the area. I guess the woman on the phone pulled up this file and told us that there was a snowmobile rider by the name of Wendy Harrison who died in an avalanche in this exact area 50 years ago. I hung up and all of us looked like we had seen a ghost. Everyone was silent. Let's just say after we got the courage, we packed up, loaded our sleds, and got out of the parking lot as soon as we could. It took me a while to get back to the snowmobile zone. I want to say two years. I never felt quite right going there. Well, all of us felt the same. It wasn't until yesterday, actually. The same riders and myself decided to face our fears and ride this area again. But this time, a big wave of happiness overwhelmed me. It was very strange. But I felt as though Wendy was there, and she was happy to see us back together riding again. It's hard to explain, but while we were riding yesterday, a thought came over me, almost like Wendy was sending me a message. The thoughts that came in was happiness, laughter, and empowering. Two years ago, Wendy finally got to be a part of a ride, a woman's ride for the first time and the last time. 
She was extremely happy to see all of us come together to ride in an area she calls home. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who felt this way. I learned all five of us had some type of experience while riding yesterday. And after our ride, the five of us loaded our snowmobiles and we hit up our popular restaurant in town and we shared our stories together. We shared our experience from two years ago and our experience we just had moments ago. After that, we decided to plan a women's meetup and ride every year on this exact day for years to come in this particular snowmobile area to share Wendy's story and legacy for the years to come with other riders. And we know that Wendy deep down, would be so happy and proud to have women come and ride in her resting area. All right. (laughs) Okay, so my thoughts on the snowmobile experience. Um, Well, one, uh spooky oh my god could you imagine yeah riding with a ghost rider and then um all of a sudden they're gone they just disappear uh yeah that would be really scary and also traumatizing in a way you're organizing a social ride and then all of a sudden that's kind of put on you the pressure and then having to report a missing person that has got to be one of the scariest thing that one could go through. Um, just thoughts that come into mind is one, always get contact information from all your riders, even if they're new, <laughs> new riders. Uh, if you ever plan on organizing a ride, I'm sure you know that. But some of us don't um, get contact information get their full names just in case because you never know if you'll come across a ghost rider on a vintage sled (laughs) oh man well I hope you enjoyed those short stories I had a lot of fun writing them they are not true but they are inspired by real stories that has happened to me in the past And for those of you that are new to my spooky tales, I do um, experience quite a bit of spookiness in my day of writing, and that's how I come up with some of these stories. I think they're a lot of fun. As as scary as some of these incidents have happened, I always try to look at the positives and think, ooh, I can create a story about this. Obviously, I turn it into more of a spooky tale but um yeah let's just say let's just say that some of these there's some truth behind some of these stories cue spooky music (laughs) all right happy halloween to all of you that celebrate it i hope you um have a safe halloween and if you're still riding out there um be safe i hope you don't come across anything spooky or a ghost rider. Thank you so much for listening and happy Halloween. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>